time for the bell. How many options will you sell? Fire up your platform, get ready to enter. But first, let's get the mindset centered. Hey, hey, let's go. Uh, we're not here to gamble, we're here to trade. We follow the plan, that's how we get paid. Testing, trading, have success. Find what works for you and forget the rest. Stats and probabilities is what we're about. Time to dismiss greed and doubt. Focus on the process, not the money. And the profits will flow like honey. Power our lives, let's start the show. Come on, trade hackers, get ready to go. Zero day options, time to make bank. Get locked and loaded, then be ready to plank. Hey! Hey everyone, welcome to Power Hour Live, September 4th on a Wednesday. Hope everybody's doing well. S&P down 15, NASDAQ down 44, Russell down 6, Dow down 29. Gold barely green, silver up almost half percent. Notes and bonds green, 10-year yield down almost 2%, oil down almost 2%, natty gas down 2.5%. Grains are all green, wheat is up 2.5%. Euro and the pound a little bit green. Bitcoin down about a half percent. VIX is up a few percent, sitting at 2150. SPX strong early in the day, pushed through its upside expected move all the way back down to close to where we opened. Pop the uh, volatility back up. VIX got down to as low as about 19.34 ish. Back up to 21.61. Uh, I just did one price action trade today because I was just, I had a couple calls and I was distracted. Ended up hitting 20% and stopped out of the rest. So it was a small winner of about 300. Um, when we were strong, I entered a butterfly to the upside looking for continuation above the expected move. Uh, when that kind of faltered. I just quickly cut it out of that one for loss. I did um, do an AM iron condor at the open, booked some profits on part of it. And then on one of the contracts, I transformed into this double vertical. So we would have to go below 54.75 on the downside for that to hit or above 55.65. I did a one, two double calendar that is up a few percent, a couple percent. Uh, I did a, a VRR in NDX when we started getting weak, which is up nicely. It's up about 1500 and this is a, it's a one DTE. So I may convert or excuse me, I, I may transform. I did two lots. So I may transform one of them and then leave the other one for some more downside. This thing looks like it's getting. Gnarly to the downside again, potentially. If you look at the daily chart, obviously that big down day yesterday, we tried to bounce today, but breaking back down to the lows. So it looks like a continuation lower. Um, I think, oh, I, I posted in the day trading chat. I had a, I had a, about a $500 in winners this morning on three trades. And then I posted this afternoon um, based on the, Similar price action that you're seeing in NASDAQ and SPX, uh, Google kind of did the same thing, bounce that came down. So I got short with some puts in Goog. I've got some two-day ones that I will close by the end of the day. And then I've also got some nine-day options that I'm going to hold overnight for a potential continuation lower. I was just, I was looking for, I was going to do it on, well, I, I got short NDX and then I was looking for a stock and Google was the one that kind of fit the bill for me. So short Goog. Other than that, that is it for me today. Chad, how's your day? Chad is on mute. I, un I unmuted that once and then it got muted again. There we go. Uh, AM number one, uh, 20, 40, 60 and out. Uh, I added this AM number two. Probably could have waited a little bit longer um, or 
not skewed it. Um, basically, you know, it looked like things were going to continue to march higher. And so I skewed it to have some up more upside run. And uh, then we got big push down. And it stopped me out with um, $1. forty-something in slippage. If I just would have centered it, it ended up then bouncing up another oh, 17 points. So if I would have centered it, I probably just would have booked maybe 40 and out until it may have even hit 60 and out with it. If I just would have centered the darn thing, but tried to skew it a little bit to give it some upside run as it looked like things were pushing up. And then, so, uh, you know, I mean, I keep making that mistake. It's the same mistake. I don't do that very often. I don't skew them. Um, but it seems like, you know, I might do it once every couple of weeks or once twice a month and it never works. So it would have been better for me just to center the darn thing the second the second one. So that was, uh, I, I, I look back, I even closed the puts. I started bouncing. I closed the puts for a dollar five and it was still a minus 5,660, 10, 10 contracts. And I look back, that is the largest one trade loss, um, this entire year. So filled at five sixty five, ten 10 contracts, Pretty normal trade. Dollar forty-five of slippage, so those closed at twelve forty instead of ten ninety-five. And even with the dollar five puts, they were big loss. So just stuck to the process. And um, lunchtime number one, twenty forty sixteen out. Just booked twenty percent of my lunchtime number two. It's currently just left of center. Um, so believe it or not, we've got a little bit of a green day going on now. So, and I, I, I mentioned in my channel, I couldn't do my one DT. I'd be at my doctor's office at 830 when the market opened. So, but man, I wish I would have been able to place my one DTE trade because it would have probably would have been a 40% winner. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. I, I was live streaming this morning in the day in the day trading and my for whatever reason my one DTE didn't fire. I I gotta go back and figure out what happened, but actually it may have been stopped out on the upside. I don't know. Yeah, it, I don't think mine would have on an eight dollar stop. Cause it blew through the upside expected move pretty good. But anyway, I didn't take a one DTE either way. Might have been close, I guess. I yeah, I'd been that would have been interesting to see. What was that? What was that move there? It was a, it was a pretty, for me, it would have been a, you know, $4 short strike. So it was a bit of pretty wide iron condor. I guess that was about a 45 point move up before it started coming down. Dave, are you doing my version or a different version? Yeah, I did notice that VIX was late. Okay, so it would have looks like it would have stayed safe. So I'll decide here if I want to get in anything else. I just feel like this thing is just going to continue lower, but I could still get in about. 15 ish wide. Uh, see, Quanteo, are you in the live stream? I mean, of course you can do that, but do you know how you find that out based on your account size? I'll give you one guess. How? How do you answer that question for yourself? Because I know nothing about your account. So it's hard for me to answer that question. But how would you answer that question? Anybody? Or maybe Quanteo's going to answer it.
Yes. We're starting to see some stocks bleed. By paper trading it, yes, Quanteo. I mean, of course you of course you can trade with two contracts and do a 20% and 40% and out. There's people that do that. But how will that work out with your account? You learn that by you you learn what your max loss would be. You learn maybe what some slippage would be. You learn what profits would be by spending a couple months of paper trading it. SPX new lows of day. Yeah, I had a feeling this was going to happen. VIX not quite back to highs of day, but getting close. I, from my morning price action trade, I still have some long puts that I was kind of anticipating for their downside. So I held them, but they've been sitting between 10 and 20 cents all day. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> it just I, keeps I, grinding lower. No, no uh, flushes. Yep. I just, um, I've closed my puts and calls all day today. Every, if I, if I get filled at 20%, I, I close five put longs, five, five long puts, five long calls. It's just not worth, it doesn't seem to be worth anything. Nvidia looked strong today early. It is bleeding back down. Square back down to lows. Google back down to lows. Amazon through lows of day. DLTR down 25%. Yeah, had earnings. After earnings. Man, that thing is and taking a dive in March. It was at 147. Now it's at 61. The old Dollar Tree is just not selling enough things for a dollar, I guess. SMCI down over five. Affirm down five. Coinbase down four. Amazon down two. NVIDIA down one and a half. On the green side, Tesla is up almost 4%. It's come off its highs a little bit, but it's still fairly strong. AMD up over 2.5. Oh, Boeing just was really, really strong earlier. It's up still about 1.3. Yeah. I just realized I, when I got... Build on my 20% that I got started live streaming and I got to talk in a little bit and forgot to put in my OCO order. So now my stop is going to be inaccurate because it's moved from 450 to 650. Darn it. So I was trying to fund my IB account to do more BIX and uh, because it's a corporate account, I had to, I could have wired the money, which would have been the best idea, but I decided just to do a bill pay and send a check. Well, my bank, I guess because of the amount, my bank held it for a week. Now IB has received it and they say it's not going to be available for trading until September 12th. So it's going to be literally three weeks from sending the money or from when I did it from my bank to when I'd be able to trade it. So FYI, if you're with IB, do not send a check. <laughs> it's crazy. Mm -hmm. 
So I've just been doing some one-to-one BIX. I did one, two, three, four, five tranches. I'm up a couple hundred bucks on just one lot, one-to-ones. All right, so I just I just manually closed my lunchtime number two at six eighty five. I don't know what the stop would have been. Let's see, four fifty. I didn't have my OCO order in, so five sixty five. It would have been a three dollar and forty cents. So it probably would have been seven something. But if I would have put it in at, when the price was already at six fifty, it would have been way wrong. So I just closed it for a scratch trade after hit, hit, hitting twenty percent. Well, let's see what these longs are worth. Long puts thirty cents. Yeah, let me hold on to those just for a bit here. Get a little more out of them. Yeah, yeah, I could do that, Anil. Good, good idea. Long calls are worthless. Yeah, it's just gonna take a it's gonna take a huge move for these puts to be worth anything. Yeah, save myself two hundred fifty bucks and close them out. Thirty cents, three hundred bucks. So ended up being a small winner. SPX at lows of day, also yesterday's low of day. So we did have jolts this morning, 30 minutes after the market opened. And I did a little bit of a dance, but not nothing too crazy. And then let's see, we had the beige book at 1 p.m. Central. So that's about an, a little over an hour ago. Tomorrow, pre-market, ADP non-farm and unemployment claims. 30 minutes after the market opens, ISM services. And then Friday, more employment data and a couple of Fed speakers, which yesterday they were both labeled as medium impact, and now Waller is labeled as high impact. So not sure what, time you, what that is. What time did you say that was? So Williams is at 7.45 a.m., so 45 minutes before the market opens, and then Waller is at 10 a.m. Central. Okay. Due to speak about economic outlook at the University of Notre Dame. That's on Friday.
trying to transform one of my two NDX VRRs. So in terms of a, I'm not in anything now since I closed out that lunchtime number one, which looks like it would have gotten stopped anyway as it's continued lower. But I mean, there's just no consolidation. So there's there's no power hour entry. If you're wondering, yeah. I had somebody ask yesterday that wasn't in the live stream. Hey, why no power hour? Because I didn't do a power hour trade yesterday either. But yesterday I, I did have a lunchtime trade on through mo probably half a power hour that wasn't off center. So that was the reason why none yesterday. But today it's a different story. There's just no... No consolidation. You know, I thought for some reason my head was thinking it was Tuesday. And kind of between 1230 Central and 130 Central, I thought, like, okay, we're getting some nice little consolidation here. Looks like it might be the Tuesday consolidation. Be a good time for a Wooga. Power hour should be good. Yeah, you tricked me into a Wooga as well. Did you I put, put it on? on? I put it on and then same and then I saw same thing you did. Oh wait, it's Wednesday. And so I closed it out for a 10 cent winner. <laughs> I totally would have put it on if not for those two, what is that, a 15 point drop there at uh 10 minutes before you're supposed to put a woog on. Yeah, 130 central. There was a from 55 to 26 down to 55, 11, or 12. That, when that happened, I was like, oh, this doesn't look good for Wooga. And that's when Moel reminded me it's Wednesday. But I totally would have put one on. The damn Labor Day it confused yeah. us again. Yeah, I never really looked forward to Fridays over the last several years. Because that means, you know, weekend, no trading. But now that I'm back in the high school football scene, got, got something to look forward to on a Friday now. Well, some of these stocks are bleeding lower, but my Goog has just kind of stabilized right at lows of day. Tesla's still up under three and a half percent. Yeah, Tesla's been strong. It has come off its highs a little bit, but still. Stronger than most. Seems like it's them want to push below yesterday's low. See, it's you can get a 15 wide with 13.4 expected move. That's that's not ideal.
Trying to bounce off yesterday's lows a little bit. Yeah, it doesn't want really to want to cross through there. Let's see what kind of consolidation we get now. Let me go in on a power hour trade. 10 or 15 minutes here. Fifteen wide for low premiums, ten wide for probably more normal premium. It had five eighty five. It wasn't five eighty five for fifteen wide shorts, thirty wide, and now it's down to five forty five. So that was some pretty quick theta decay there. Yeah, it's like in that bounce after it's been just trailing down for as long as it has. Well, I'm currently setting it down 720 bucks for the day after taking a $5,600 loss. So, I can't be too upset with that. That's what I end up with. Uh, Eric D, I would say Chad can answer too, but I would say for me, I do not. I don't put any weight. I mean, I'll look at overall price action. I like to look at price action on the five minute chart and the daily chart. But as far as using just big round price levels as anything, I do not. No, I don't either. I look at more like what is price range? instead of looking at the actual number itself. I talk about, I talk about levels a decent amount in my uh, futures day trading course and kind of the high level overview from my perspective is you can use whatever levels you want. It's, it's really about how you manage risk around those levels. So nothing wrong with using those as kind of your line in the sand, but just understand there's nothing magic about them. It's about how you manage risk around those levels. It really matters. Now, when we pin today at 5,500, you're going to be like, yeah, but look, <laughs> we pinned at 5,500 exactly. All right. I'm going to get in here. I like how it's like stabilizing above yesterday's low. 5515s, 5500s. Do one power hour trade here. Filled at 545. So just posted that.
Let's see. How did you big traders do today? Elliot, Elliot, you're doing well, it looks like. A little bouncy. I bet this pin's about 55.06 today. That's your prediction? Yeah, about right where it opened. Did Chris let you borrow his crystal ball? Where's he Chris? did. I haven't heard from Chris this week. He did. It just shattered all over the place. Fifty five oh six, huh? Well, just saying, looks like it wants to end where it opened. I'm going to go with 54.89. That's, that would be a pretty big down move, yeah. <laughs> Wednesday, why not? Meta has stayed pretty strong all day as well. Neil's go, coming in at 54.84. Okay. He's even more bearish than I am. Ed with 55.01. 55.06. Dave S. is jumping on Chad's train. One dollar, Bob. One dollar. Eli's bullish. She's going 55.24. Mukesh is bullish, 55.25. This is what makes a market a market, my friends. <laughs> Everybody has a different opinion.
I was uh, I put my one two double calendar on earlier with the intent of potentially adding an, another tranche. But I think I'm just going to hold. Hold what I've got. Now, kind of wanting to book 20% on this power hour trade before it decides to take off or whatever it's going to do. Yeah, I haven't priced out any butterflies today. Let's see the 55.15. Like it's going for about 70, 80 cents, maybe. Bix coming down off its uh bounced off of uh yesterday's high a little bit coming down 21.43. Dave S, you still trade the old school power hour? Tranche one, two, three consistently? Okay. And we'll bounce up to fifty five fifteen. Oh, how I missed the days of the three tranche power hour. Those were the fun days. Yeah, power somebody hours. asked somebody asked me about that. When's the last time you traded that way? It, somebody asked me about that. I was uh, like, I, I mean, I, I don't think I, Steve's traded that in a long time. I still, I still will on an up day, like if we're up about a half percent or more from the open, but yeah, it just, it lost its, it lost it's, its luster. Yeah. It was so good for a while. I was in one of my coaching, I was in one of my coaching sessions. Somebody's asking, do I, do I learn the TLC power hour or the, Three tranche. Yeah, I've changed over to just watch the price action and doing it. Still some consistency on up days, but not the normal way we used to trade it.
Yeah. My 15 wide is going to it's going to need some down movement. Currently um, trading at five seventy five, and my stop is at nine dollars. It is pretty off center. Theoretically, I should be adding a tranche two right now. Trust the process, Chad. Trust the process. I heard somebody say once. Yeah, it would only be uh, 10 wide, though. With an 11-point expected move left. That's not part of the process. Oh, wow. Boeing is all the way back down to lows of day. That thing was rocking earlier. Oh, not lows of day. Oh, never mind. I had to expand my five-minute chart a little bit. <clears throat> Gave up a lot, though. Talking about Dark Avenger mentioned an upside continuation runner in there, but which there's a couple points of entry. I could have done well. I didn't get in though. My profit target is $4.40. You're getting in a late day Wooga five wide. I'm in my last trade of the day, and if I could pull this off, it would be one of the best comebacks I've ever had in terms of going from a $5,660 loss to a green day. I need some data to decay. Go ahead and do it. Me? Yeah, just hit confirm and send. <laughs> That's the button you need to I, press. I'm just I'm afraid it's gonna close below fifty five hundred, so we're 
It's the confirm and send button. <laughs> Just press it once. You don't even have to press it twice. Let's see if we uh, skew this to the downside. What would that look like? No, oh, man. Skewing is not good. I like that. I could use some down move. <clears throat> I need down move and I need theta decay. Like it wants to move up. If I got a four point move down, I'd probably hit forty percent. All right, I'm in. Man. One lot. Johnny one lot. Skewed to the downside. This thing might want to hit highs of day. Settle in right down at lows of day would be max. Max profit 710, max risk 290. I like that. Say that again. What was it? Max profit is 710, max risk is 290. Oh, yeah. Just, just letting it expire. It's yeah. got to go lower, though. No problem at all. We should back test some late day woogas. I remember right. The early, the early and the normal ones from my memory perform better. But it's been a while. I haven't, I haven't heard from the real wooga in a long time. I don't know where Wooga has been. He must be busy with his real job. Or he just got tired of us, one of the two. Come on, down move. This thing owes me. Apple trying to get back up to highs of day. Tesla's starting to bounce. Ah, oh, there it goes. Gosh darn it. Did you get stopped? Not yet, but man. Stop has been lowered to 885. It's currently at 750. But just the thing is, like it, it, a three point down move is all it would have taken to probably book 40%. Still might. Might have been a head fake.
whoever the guy is sitting there pushing the buttons, making the market go one way or the other, he needs to push it to the push the button that makes it go down. Fifteen butterflies, still less than a buck. Ooh, my one twos popped up. It's up about seven percent. I'm going to put an order in for $22 to close my one, two. If it doesn't hit, I will hold overnight. Fifty five nineteen. It was about sixty cents from getting stopped. Got to about eight twenty. Stops now eight eighty five. Now it's back down under eight. Now it's back up to eight. Back down to under seven. Come on down. Come on, Theta. Back under six. <laughs> Original fill was 545. down there about three minutes till moc i got it moel thank you now yeah, back up to 740 780 
eight dollars. Guessing a power hour number two, uh, put that on, would have been doing pretty good. <clears throat> so you were right. Trust the process. <laughs> I mean, it would have been a 10 point range, probably 15s and 25s. You definitely would have already been booking 20% at least. <clears throat> yeah. One minute till MOC. At the money butterflies trading for a dollar. Yeah, boy. Saw eight fifty. Now back down to eight. Eight thirty. Eight fifty. Eight eighty. It's right there to be stopped, maybe. It was a nickel away. Just closed my one two. It's about, I don't know, 887. Two billion to the buy side. Oh, yeah, it's going to get stopped. Stopped at 920. Thank you very much, Power Hour. Go ahead and start putting my Mahomes in, but not really very close mm -hmm. to two bucks. Yeah, you know, that's what I get for playing Power Hour when I shouldn't have. Was that minus seven twenty, and I went to a minus four thousand three hundred twenty. Eli and Mukesh said fifty five twenty four fifty five twenty five. Hanging out right there. Eight minutes to go.
Mark in the 30s, the 25s, and the 20s. Add the 15s. Twenties look like they're only trading for about I don't even know. Dollar fifty, dollar sixty. Uh, it was about 30 seconds, Naughty Dog. And it was, a, so I got filled on the 20s with toss and I got filled on the 25s 30 seconds later with uh, Trade Steward. Both were winners, but. Down towards 15. Yeah, thanks for coming down. I know I needed that a while ago. Man, they are they are keeping these flies cheap. Five minutes to go, nowhere close. We need some last minute heroics. It was kind of odd yesterday. We were trading at like 23. So we were closer to the, my 25 strike, but it filled the 20s. Don't recall seeing that before. All right, between the 20s and 25s. We need to get closer to a strike. Three minutes to go.
24, getting close on the 25s. Two minute warning. Not wanting to hover near a strike. One minute to go. 25 should be filling. Filled. Bot filled as well in the 25s. All right, move away from 25. We're at 22. Twenty seconds. One more little push down. Come on, hit it. Lock it, lock it in, partial lock. There we go. Nice. Mahomes wins again. Settling in at 55.19.99. Max winner on my bot trade, vertical locked on my uh, toss trade. Beautiful. All right, all. Uh, let's see. Tomorrow, I will be streaming live tomorrow at the Open for day trading, Mighty 90 and Runners. And then we'll be back for Power Hour in the afternoon. Everybody have a good night. Talk to you soon.